Hey guys, uh, first thing I'll say is happy Thanksgiving and I'm not home right now. So if you notice my lighting's not that great, maybe my sound sounds a little bit different. I haven't really tested this yet to be honest because uh, I'm just snuck downstairs real quick uh, <laughs> while my family's getting a few uh, pies ready for, uh, for us to eat. Anyway, the point is as everybody was working on pies and such, I was able to take a look at the tech news and I noticed something interesting, which is about smart access memory. And uh, it's about the support expanding a bit beyond what uh, we were originally told by AMD. And that's good news. And I also uh, want to start out with a quick review of what is smart access memory, do a little bit of a review on, okay, AMD gave us some performance claims, but what did it actually test out from reviewers? And then I'll get into some of the news again about the expanded support. So first of all, again, what is smart access memory? Well, uh, when this was announced by AMD, the basic idea is that normally your CPU talks to a certain portion of your memory in your GPU, the GPU memory, the VRAM, right? So the idea of smart access memory is allowing it to talk to all of the VRAM and have access to all of that at the same time instead of just a small portion of that. And that's good. That can remove a bottleneck if that creates a bottleneck in certain situations. The idea then being a performance gain whenever you were bottlenecked by the um, access size to those areas. Now, people pointed out that this is basically something called resizable bar, which has been a part of the PCI, uh, PCI Express standard for a while now, but nobody's really taken advantage of it and had their hardware actually updated to a point to support that. Although, you know, I have heard stuff about it maybe have been supported on Linux, but I'm not a Linux user. I don't know much about that. Anyway, um, the point is that AMD claimed that in certain situations, this could actually have some very large performance gains. They're claiming up to 11%. And specifically, I think they were saying that was a Forza, Forza Horizon 4, where they were seeing that 11% gain. But then they gave lots of these other titles where they were seeing at least a 5% gain. And again, it's saying up to. The idea here is if your game doesn't have a bottleneck, or if you're not gaming, some other application doesn't have a bottleneck because of this uh, access size issue, then you don't see a performance gain. But the more that's creating a bottleneck in the game, uh, the more you see the performance gain. So that's the idea. Now, here's the thing. When AMD announced this, they were saying it was very restrictive on the hardware you had to have to get this feature. Specifically, you had to have a 500 series motherboard, a uh, Ryzen 5000 series processor, and a uh, Radeon 6000 series graphics card. And as soon as they announced this, lots of people were wondering, will this access expand to older hardware in the future? And we were very hopeful that it would. And before we got an answer to that question, we started seeing people asking NVIDIA about that. And I've reported this in the past, but NVIDIA is claiming that the capability for resizable bar support is part of the PCI Express spec, as I showed you guys and did a video about before. Um, and the NVIDIA hardware supports this functionality and will enable it on Ampere GPUs through future software updates. And we have it working internally and are seeing similar performance results, uh, you know, similar to what AMD was claiming. And again, uh, the idea here is that they will see that, um, see that support expanding to NVIDIA hardware, which is good. Now, the question then becomes, um, is AMD hardware going to expand further backwards? And that's where the kind of interesting news uh, comes in today. But before we talk about that, I also want to get into, OK, but like, does it actually work? Because those other performance numbers were given to us by AMD. But now that we have the 6000 series graphics cards, some people have dive, uh, dived in, it would be dove in, uh, have done, there we go, have done some testing on this. So this is from Tech Power Up. I'll link all my sources here in the description to this video if you wanna take a closer look for yourself, because this is just the um, averages at the different resolutions rather than getting into particular games. Uh, the idea being here, again, this is from uh, Tech Power Up. Uh, just to kind of scroll through quickly, like you can get into, different specific games like here's Anno, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And again, and uh, all these have the uh, 
SAM, that's the Smart Access Memory. They have it with it disabled and with it enabled. And they also have it up against the 3080, kind of seeing like when the 6800 XT is behind the 3080, does the SAM give you that jump over it? That's kind of what they were testing on here, uh, testing it up against its competitor. And as you can see, there are certain games where it did seem to make a huge difference. Like here's Battlefield 5 at 1440p. And apparently uh, they were you know, jumping up from like 206.7 to 213.6. And by huge difference, I don't mean like huge, but like it's measurable. It's a measurable difference. Um, and so there are definitely games where it's making a difference. So I don't want to go through every single one of these. That's not the point of this video. I just get into their averages, right? So they're, um, again, from this Tech Power Up article, which tested 22 games. And if you tested a different 22 games, you would probably get different averages, right? because different games will respond differently to this. But in this average, uh, if you set the normal performance of the 6800 XT at 100% and then you enable it, they saw at 1080p an average of a 2% performance uplift. And a, at 1440p, they saw again a 2% performance uplift. And at 4K, they saw on average a 2% performance uplift. In other words, they saw an average of a 2% performance uplift by enabling smart access memory. And you can compare the direct frame rate averages here if you'd like. So the idea here is, is smart access memory a game changer? I did a video when this was first announced on, is smart access memory a gimmick or a game changer? And my conclusion was, it's kind of a nice to have. It's, it's really good that they're doing this and especially that it'll push Nvidia to do the same because if we can get free performance, that's awesome. But is it a absolute game changer in terms of the performance gain you're getting in most games? Well, at least in these games, it's seeming like it's a small performance gain, you know, 2%. And that's good, but you know, it's not like you're gonna actually notice a 2% gain in performance side by side when you're gaming. But once again, free performance is free performance and good job AMD for getting this, uh, getting this out there and getting this to become a thing, right? Let's take the free performance when we can get it. But once again, is it locked down to these exact boards? Well, let's take a look here. So this is an article from WCCF Tech and it's talking about two things. One is expansion of the, uh, like when will the 5,000 CPUs, uh, the, the Zen 3, right? The Ryzen 5,000 CPUs. When are they going to be available on older motherboards like X470 and B450 motherboards? And apparently the official uh, firmware updates, BIOS updates, all of that uh, should be coming in January. But then the other thing is some of them are releasing them early or at least unofficial versions. And along with that, could be coming some smart access memory support. And this is not likely to be official smart access memory support, but it could still be something you could turn on. It's kind of a, just a like, you know, it's here, you can use it, but maybe it hasn't been validated by AMD. And it's probably just these particular hardware combinations where they're sure it should work up to its full potential. So they probably don't wanna advertise it and officially support it on the older ones, at least not right now especially when it you know, maybe hasn't been fully tested and, and all of that. And again, I think AMD is claiming that you need that PCIe Gen 4 support for it to work fully. And some of these boards maybe don't you know, officially support that, right? That's the idea. Now to summarize uh, real quick here on the, uh, the support. So ASRock, Gigabyte, Asus, and MSI, all are saying that they will be adding in some support for the, this is for the 5000 series processors. This is not all for, for the smart access memory. Um, but again, um, we are seeing that there's some unofficial stuff available now from some of these guys and then official ones coming later again. But then again, what about the smart access memory support? Well, there's already been a uh, YouTuber who has actually already tried this out on a 400 series ASRock motherboard. So it seems like in the unofficial uh, BIOS support that they've added on the ASRock boards, or at least the one that this, uh, this YouTuber had, that they were uh, able to just get into the settings menu in their BIOS and just turn on smart access memory and tested it out. And it did seem to be working. Apparently this was a B450 Steel Legend motherboard. Notice it's a B450, right? That's only the, the 450 one, um, which is pretty interesting. So again, this is unofficial support, 
Um, but it is support. So what I'd say is, you know, if you guys have one of these motherboards and you actually have a 5,000 series processor and a 6,000 series GPU, because I'm pretty sure you do need that. So I think on the older GPU and CPUs, you're not gonna get this up and running even if you update to that, um, that BIOS. That's how I'm understanding this. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but that, that's my understanding. I don't have one of these boards or those, that type of hardware to test this for myself. But my understanding, again, is that if you have the proper CPU and GPU and you, un and you install the unofficial BIOS that allows you to use the 5000 series processor on here, uh, that apparently you can get into the BIOS and turn on smart access memory, which is pretty cool. And I would say that the fact that this is already happening, happening leads me to believe that we are gonna be seeing the support going back to older motherboards, at least unofficially. And so, you know, maybe your, your results could vary, but if we're seeing on average only like a 2% gain from having it anyway, you know, as long as it doesn't cause glitches or something, um, you know, maybe it doesn't work as well and you get a 1% gain instead of a 2%. Well, if it's literally just turning on a setting in your motherboard, then might as well take the extra one or 2% gain if you can get it. And we have seen again, there are certain specific games where it does become a larger, a larger gain, a larger feature and an even bigger nice to have. And, and who knows if we'll see games in the future that maybe take this into account when they're programmed and maybe could, uh, could leverage it a little bit farther, especially if Nvidia starts supporting it and older hardware starts supporting it. Maybe this could start to become just kind of a, a more standard thing. Uh, we will see how that goes. All right, guys. Um, hey, have any of you guys tried this out? Well, you might be having trouble. Now, this is a Thanksgiving video, so I'm trying to be thankful <laughs> talking about how we're getting this expanded, uh, at least unofficial support on some older hardware. So I'm thankful for that. I was about to go into, uh, do any of you even have a 5,000 series CPU and 6,000 series <laughs> uh, graphics card? Because man, I was... Um, not thankful for the uh, supply side of the 6000 series GPU launch here. Wow, for the board partner cards. But that's not the point of this video, guys. I'm gonna stay thankful today, it's Thanksgiving. And I hope you guys have an excellent day.